Hello there and welcome to The Meaningful Stitch. I'm Amy Palco and this is a special episode, so a little bit unlike previous episodes where I normally share what I'm currently working on, what's on my needles, what's off my needles. This is a special episode all about summer knitting. And so I'm going to share with you all of my hand knit summer wardrobe and I'm going to try it all on for you so that you can see what it all looks like. I have a selection of garments and accessories, not many accessories, but a few. And then after that, I'm going to take you over to my local yarn shop, Ginger Twist Studio, and I'm going to introduce you to my friend Jess. And we're going to talk about some more summer designs that are coming out, some that are in our queue, and she's going to share with us some summer yarns. So it's a, a bit of an extravaganza, but I'm going to start with a couple of caveats. <laughs> the first is, is that I have moved into a different room in my house to film this. And that's because I tried to film this already and the lighting was just awful. It was all over the place. So I'm really hoping that by changing the venue <laughs> that I will have a little bit more consistent lighting. So fingers crossed. The second thing that I need to say is that this is summer knitting in Edinburgh. <laughs> so I'm based in Edinburgh, Scotland, and we don't have particularly hot summers. We have quite a temperate climate here and generally we'll stay round about high teens, low 20s in Celsius. And we certainly won't get up to say low 80s in Fahrenheit, uh, 30 degrees Celsius. That's a very, very rare day. And if it happens, it's one day and then it's gone. Maybe one day out of every three years or so, we might get up to 30 degrees. But, um, but generally it's much cooler than that. So a lot of the garments that I'm going to share with you perhaps don't strike you necessarily as summer knitting, but for the, the kind of climate that we have here, it's absolutely perfect for us. And I would say too that it might work better if you're in a hotter country, that a hotter climate, that it might work better as transitional wear for you. So perhaps like a spring or, or autumn, or perhaps in the evenings when things get a little bit cooler. But for us, this is, uh, this is about as, as hot as it gets. <laughs> Although I should say, we really are having quite a cool and rainy grey day here today. We are, I'm filming this at the end of May, and I think it's 13 degrees Celsius and raining and cloudy. So, <laughs> so that's about average, I would say. That is not unusual for this time of year. I would imagine in June it will get a little bit warmer. July tends to be quite wet, actually. It doesn't tend to be a great month for us. August will sometimes get some nice days. September is really a, a good month here and we get some late warmth. But yes, overall, our climate is a little bit cooler. So it is summer knitting, but it's summer Scottish knitting. And this is my summer wardrobe for a Scottish climate. <laughs> Okay, my darling, so I basically have a big Ikea bag down here, which is full of things that I'm going to try on. And I'm just going to move through them one by one. And some you might have seen from previous episodes that I've uh, shared them on or, or knitted them on or worn them on. Uh, some might not be familiar to you. So we're just going to go through all of them. And then, like I said, I'm going to take a break and I'm going to go off to Ginger Twist Studio and introduce you to Jess and some more summer knitting and summer yarns. Okay, so first one. Here we go. Now, this is my most recent FO for summer knitting. This is the Plant Lady Tea and it's by Agatha Makovitz, who is Amanita Knits on Instagram. And I have knitted this in Woolly Knits Linen Cotton. Now, I bought a cone, it came out, I think this yarn was quite recently released, and they are selling it in 300 gram cones. So I'll stand back a little bit so you can see the lace at the bottom. They're selling it in 300 gram cones and it is a lace weight yarn. So I have held that double in order to create a fingering weight. So it actually feels like quite a dense weight of fabric but it's very drapey. It was lovely to knit with. I'll come a little bit closer so you can see how it looks. So you can really see the composition of this summer yarn because we have this kind of lighter color here, which is the cotton. It's a little bit fluffier. And then we have this kind of darker shade here, 
which is the linen and it's a bit smoother. So together it creates a really beautiful fabric and I love this colour. This colour is called Lightroom Yellow and I bought two cones actually. I think the other one is called Wexford Blue, which is like a, a dark navy. Uh, it's got quite a large scoop neck and I know that some other people who have knitted it have made modifications so it's not quite such a wide neck, but I quite like a wide neck. Uh, I knitted it a little bit longer. Oh no, I didn't. I knitted it one inch shorter than um, than suggest the pattern suggested. So it's a little bit more cropped. So it sits nicely over my dress. My dress, I should say, this what you can just see now <laughs> is a grey linen dress that my mum gave me that I think she picked up at a market in France. So I've just chosen it as a relatively neutral background for all of my knits. <laughs> So I cast this on primarily actually because I needed some straight stockinette. So I whipped through the lace pretty quickly and the lace is lovely. I'll come a bit closer so you can see it. It's kind of got these leaf patterns here and that goes all the way around the hem. And then the rest of it is just plain sailing. So it's knitted from the bottom up, I should say. And then you complete the back and then either front and you don't actually pick up for the sleeves because your sleeves are quite long. So all you're doing is you're picking up at the edges here just to knit the rib cuff. And my rib cuff is a little bit shorter than recommended and that's because I was very nearly running out of yarn. So I was playing yarn chicken. I think out of my 300 gram cone, I had, 500, I had five grams of yarn left over. So, uh, so yes, I was, I was going a bit close to the wind there, but this is a lovely top. I've not had a huge opportunity to wear it with the weather being what it is, <laughs> but I have worn it a couple of times. I've worn it with a pair of jeans and a long cami underneath, and I've also worn it with, um, with a pair of black leggings and a black skirt. So that's all I've managed to wear it with so far, but you can see. I really like it and I do think I'm going to get some more, some more wear out of it. So that's the Plant Lady Tea and that's by Agatha Makovitz and it's in Woolly Knits, Linen Cotton Cone in Lightroom Yellow. Okay, ready for another one? <laughs> okay, so the next one I've got for you at the top of the pile here is this one here. Now this is White Horse by Caitlin Hunter who's Boyland Knitworks on Instagram and Ravelry. And I have knitted this in Creative Linen by Rowan. I actually picked this yarn up at John Lewis's and it was in the discount basket. So I got quite a few skeins of it and decided this would be the perfect project for it. So just make sure I've got it the right way around. Yes, I do. <laughs> now, this is a beautiful jumper pattern. And I think this actually makes a point that I was trying to state earlier, which is that some of these patterns won't necessarily strike you as a summer knit. For me, this is absolutely a summer knit. It's a slightly heavier weight cotton. I think it's DK weight. It's a linen cotton blend again. So it's the, the plant fibres. So it feels quite cool on the body. Uh, it's just, it's not even three quarter length sleeves. It's just after my elbow there. And I've knitted it with quite a bit of positive ease, which is the same for this, uh, for this Plant Lady tea as well. And I'll just come forward so you can see the beautiful, the beautiful yoke. So it's this lace and baubles. I know that some people have issues with this yoke pattern because it's not symmetrical, but actually that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I really like how it looks. So yes, you might not necessarily think of this as a summer knit, but I think that you can take virtually any, any pattern, knit it in a summer yarn, crop it, give it some short sleeves, and that for me makes it into a summer knit. So if you are looking through patterns and you can't find any summer knit patterns that really appeal to you, but you have some favorites, perhaps it's a, a straightforward raglan or a yoke pattern, then you can always do it with short sleeves and change your yarn and um, choose an appropriate yarn for summer and uh, and swatch with it and see what you get. Um, but I was really pleased with how this worked out. In fact, I was so pleased with it 
Then I knitted another one. So I'll show you that one now. This is something I do quite often, which is knit the same thing twice because I love it so much. But this is my second one here. And this is, I knitted the same size, but it's a different yarn. And this is Fonte Bohem, which is also a linen cotton blend. And this is in the color of kind of like a pale almond green. It's really very beautiful. I'm really pleased with this one. I think it worked out really nicely. Now, there was, I did make a mistake in the lace work somewhere and I had to take it back quite significantly and then re-knit it, although I seem to have done such a good job of it, I cannot now find that, so <laughs> that's good to know. So I'll try this one on as well so you can see what it looks like in a different colour. Again, I've knitted it with quite a lot of positive ease, it's the same size as that, um, as the pink one. I think possibly the sleeves are a little bit longer on this one. Maybe I had more yarn. <laughs> There we go, yeah, sleeves are more like three quarter length on this one. But the the fit is the same. And uh, again, it's this woolen, it's this linen cotton uh, blend of yarn, which is, you know, for me, it's, it's perfect for, for this kind of summer weather that we get. And uh, it means I could throw this on over the top of dresses or wear it with jeans and uh, it's a comfortable weight of, of fabric. It's got a nice bit of drape to it. And uh, and yeah, easy to wear. So I really love these white horse. <laughs> I wear these a lot. I knitted them a few years ago now, so they really have had quite a bit of wear. And you can see, because it's the linen cotton, it's, uh, it's not bobbling at all. It's you know, ever so slight, a bit of a catch there, I think, but um, they are wearing really well, so I'm really pleased with how the fabric is, is bearing up on both. So there we go, that's the White Horse by Caitlin Hunter in the Rowan Creative Linen, and this one is in the Fonte Bohem, both linen cotton blends, both DK weight. Okay, I have another DK weight, and I think this is, I think this is actually just cotton. I don't think it's got linen in it too. But again, it's another one of these tops that you might think of not necessarily as a summer knit. I'll try and make sure I get it on the right way around. This is the Nurtured Sweater by Andrea Mowry. And I have knitted this in Drop Spell. And Drop Spell is quite an interesting construction. It's very loosely plied. And that has caused a few problems with this. I'm not necessarily sure I would recommend this yarn for this pattern and that's because the all over texture on the fabric is created by holding your yarn forward so you create these slip stitches on the front so you see that you're slipping a stitch with your yarn held forward and then um, bringing your yarn back and knitting the next and then you're offsetting that on the next row so basically you're creating all of these like loops now, if this was knitted in a woolly wool, then you would probably find that those loops would stick to the fabric and it would create quite a coherent fabric. Unfortunately, with the cotton, that's not the case. So it stays, as I showed you there, quite, um, quite loose. And then this is what happens here. I start to get pulls. You see that? So it starts to get caught. Um, there's another one up here. So it's not worn as well um, as I had hoped. And I would also say too is that it's stretched a lot. So I'm fairly sure I did not knit it with this amount of positive ease. But that's what I've got. <laughs> I think this was also knitted as a bottom up construction. So you knit the sleeves first and then you knit the body and then you pull all together to create the, the top part of the garment with these raglan seams. All of that said about not recommending the yarn particularly for this project, the yarn itself was fine and I'm just saying that I think with this particular fabric I'm not sure whether it was the best match. Uh, I actually wear this a huge amount throughout the summer. It's a perfect weight for me. It's again it's a DK weight. Here's another pull. 
<laughs> it's a DK weight, but uh, because the fabric is a little bit more open, let's see if I can show you, than the white horse, it's, uh, again, it's a, a little bit easier to wear because when it gets hot, in fact, I've worn this in Bordeaux uh, when I just needed something to, when in the summertime, when I just needed to throw something on uh, to protect my, my shoulders and my neck because I am very fair skinned and I don't do very well in the sun. So I have to be very careful that I don't burn. And so some of these items I'm gonna be sharing with you are very much used as sort of summer throw-ons. Uh, to prevent burning and uh, actually even although this is a DK weight because it's DK weight cotton knitted at a loose gauge it's actually it, it serves quite well in that capacity so so there we go that's the Nurtured by Andrea Murray and it's in Drops Bell and I think the colour is called Raspberry although I knitted this a long time ago so I can't quite remember but it has had a lot of wear it has really stretched. <laughs> it has a lot of positive views. I would knit it again. I'm just not sure I've knit it again in drop spell. <laughs> okay, next one. Next garment. Well, this is a garment I think you'll all recognize. <laughs> and that's because it is a ranunculus. And this is by Midori Heroes, Knit Cafe Midori, I think she goes by on uh, Ravelry and on Instagram. This is an enormously popular pattern. When I knitted this, it was just re just released as a one size pattern. And I think there was an adjustment for a larger bust. And I think there were two different uh, sizes of cast on for the neck. Uh, but here we are. This is one of my ranunculuses and this is one of my summer pieces because I've knitted this in drop saffron in a light grey shade and then I've held it double with a mohair and the mohair is Mohair de Ferme de France which uh, I picked up from Stephanie at My Little Mai in Cognac in France. So just to come closer you'll see it's got the most amazing halo and I know that <laughs> that mohair is not really generally a, a yarn of choice for people in the summertime in other climates, but in, but in Scotland it does okay, particularly I think in the evening or on the, some of these slightly cooler days. We are right at the coast and Edinburgh is a coastal city. And so one of the weather events that we have is called the Har, which is when a, a dense sea fog rolls in down the River Forth and takes in the city and sometimes it, it'll roll in quite far and other times it'll just take in the coast. With being right at the coast it pretty much will catch us when, when it comes in <laughs> and that really does drop the temperature. So having something like this uh, which is a uh, lightweight but has a little bit of warmth to it is perfect. I've knitted this one a little bit longer I think than some of my other ones. It's got twisted rib edging which I think is really beautiful actually and I love the way that the silver has caught the um, the light for the lace work and the texture I think it really stands out well and um, and I really like how the saffron looks with this I think it's a I think it's a beautiful yarn and together actually they've they've borne up really well because uh, I knit, again I knitted this quite a long time ago. Again, it's knitted with quite a lot of um, ease in the body. It's not going to it's not going to cling to me, and that's again, you know, one of the features I think of most of my summer knitting is that it needs to have a little bit of a little bit of air around it. <laughs> so there we go. That is the Ranunculus by Midori Heroes, and I've knitted it in drop saffron with a strand of mohair de ferme de France, a uh, silk mohair in kind of a silver colorway. So there we go. Next one. <laughs> We're getting through them. <laughs> oh, now I've got mohair up my nose. <laughs> the next one is one that you might have seen because I shared it quite recently um, because I knitted it to go to a wedding. And I'm sharing it just now because it is 
I did modify it and I wanted to talk a little bit about the modification. This is the Maywick and it is by Gudrun Johnson and it's from her latest publication which is called The Shetland Trader 3 uh, Heritage. It's an all over lace work pattern which makes it very easy to wear in the summertime because obviously we've got a little bit of ventilation. <laughs> The original pattern, however, is a long sleeved and I decided to knit mine short sleeves, partly because I was going to this wedding and it was in the evening and I thought that it would be quite uh, warm at the venue and I wanted to make sure that I was staying cool. And so um, I decided just to, instead of knitting the, the full sleeves, I would knit mine short. So it's knitted from the bottom up. <laughs> Stand on my tiptoes, there you go. <laughs> it's knitted from the bottom up in this razor shell lace, which is a garter lace, but because it's knitted in the round, that means that you are knitting one row, which is your lace row, and then you're purling the next. So if you're not keen on purling, this is perhaps not the project for you. <laughs> but um, then once I had knitted up to the body and, and started to split for the sleeves, that's really when I started to look and see like where do I want my sleeve to come on my garment? And I decided that I wanted to start it with this row here. And that's because at the bottom, you'll see that I've also started with this darker red uh, stripe. And I knew that I was going to be finishing off with the dark red. So I wanted to make sure that I was starting my cuff with the dark red as well. So I think that's maybe, I don't know, a three, three inch, uh, sleeve and it's actually just perfect it sits I really like where it comes to on my arm and it and it keeps me it kept me cool in the evening and it looked really beautiful with the skirt that I had bought to go with it so it's got a little bit of waist shaping which you can see here and I have knitted it in well the other modification I made was I knitted it in six colors instead of the recommended four and I changed the yarn entirely so that whole book is knitted in Shetland Jameson's or Jameson's and Smith, uh, their jumper weight or spindrift. But I have knitted this in the Border Mill Alpaca Rose four ply, which is a 50% alpaca, 50% rose fiber yarn. And then I've got a fluffy stripe, which you can see here and here, which is some hand dyed lace weight Suri from Blue Dot Yarn in the colour Moon Age Daydream, which was the Perth Festival of Yarn colourway that uh, Kate dyed last year. So the yarn is really quite a different yarn substitution, but I think it worked really, really well. It took me a little while to figure out the placement of the colours because I was including an extra two. I wanted to make sure that it still worked within the context of the pattern. Uh, but finally got there <laughs> and I was so impressed with the alpaca rose fiber I know that some people have objections to um, silk and silk content and if you are one of those then you might want to look at something like this rose fiber as a substitution now obviously it's not vegan yarn because it combines it with alpaca fiber but, um, but this rose fiber I think really does have a beautiful shine to it and drape and performs in a very kind of similar fashion to silk. So I was really impressed with it and I really enjoyed working with it. It was absolutely a pricier option, as um, you might have noticed up till now. Uh, my yarns are usually at the affordable um, end of the range, of the price range. I like to choose drops, I like to choose uh, woolly knit and um, holst and uh, and so generally it's, it's at the cheaper end of the scale, but this was a, a kind of a luxe purchase to go because it was a, it was for a, our family wedding. So, um, so I decided to splash out a little bit and, uh, and in fact, I actually had to then go back and buy more of the gold and more of the red there, sunstone and ruby. In fact, I can't actually tell you what all the colorways are. So we have, uh, Sunstone, Pacific Ruby, then I've got the Moon Age Daydream, then I've got Crystal Beryl, um, 
oh, I can't remember what the cream one is now. I was doing so well. And ruby and sunstone. There we go. <laughs> so I almost remembered it. Yeah, it's not coming to me. <laughs> but uh, but they've got a really beautiful range um, and I will share the link to their website. In fact, I'll share links to all the patterns and the yarns in my show notes, which you'll see in the description box below. If you click on that little downward chevron, it'll open up the description box and you'll see there's a link there to Patreon. Now that's going to take you to a freely available post and it's going to have images of all of these garments and accessories. It's going to have links to everything and, uh, and you'll be able to follow that up and find, hopefully find the answers to any questions that you might have. But I will share the link to the Border Mill Alpaca Rose so that you can see that, that beautiful range of, those, um, of that yarn. So there we go. This is the Maywick and it's by Gudrun Johnson. Okay, another one. Another one which you will actually have seen quite recently and that's because I did quite extensive fixing on it. Yes, it is my Rocket Tea by Tannis Lavely, and I have knitted this in Isaiah Highland Wool in the colorway Sky and in Ching Fiber Silk Mohair in a club colorway from last year's spring spring club i think it was so i'll come a little bit closer so you can see but the sky highland wool is just i just love it it is so beautiful and then this mohair is kind of speckled it's like a, a sagey green with like black and luminous yellow speckles so this is, you can see I need, to, I need to steam it a little bit, I think, because it's got a big crease down the middle. <laughs> but it's got a little bit of um, lace detail on the raglan seams and down the sides. You are striping your uh, four ply with your lace weight in order to create this kind of really interesting uh, play of fabrics between opaque and transparent. This, I wish that I had just knitted it according to the pattern. <laughs> I knitted this last year and I, I decided that I was going to hold the mohair double to do the I-cord cast off. And I also decided that I was gonna go up a needle size because I didn't want the cast off to be too tight. Kind of not realizing or not really paying attention to the fact that this has some positive ease. So I didn't really need to worry too much about a tighter cast on, but uh, but I did. So <laughs> and it meant that the cast on was really, really noticeable. It was this very kind of bright, white, fluffy, um, thick edging. And then not content with doing it there, I then also finished off the sleeves and the neckline doing exactly the same thing. And it looked terrible. <laughs> It didn't look right at all. So I put it away in a drawer and didn't um, didn't pull it back out again, didn't wear it at all last year. Which is such a shame because I, I really love it and I love my colour choices and my fabric. Uh, so it was a shame. So this year I decided I was going to pull it back out and I was going to take the time to fix it. So the first thing I did was I pulled out the I-cord edging at the hem and I knitted a one by one rib uh, for about an inch and a half, maybe. And then I decided I was going to do a tubular cast off. So I did my setup rows and then I did the Kitchener stitch the whole way around. It looked terrible. <laughs> all that effort and it looked awful. So I then decided, okay, well, that's not working. So I then ripped that back out, put it aside for a day on the naughty step <laughs> and decided I'm just going to do what it says in the pattern, which is what I should have done all along. So <laughs> I used my four ply. I used the same needle size that I had used for the body of the fabric and I knitted my eye cord and it is a beautiful, clean, unobtrusive bind off. And I then went on and did exactly the same on the sleeves and on the neckline and it sits perfectly. It looks beautiful. Like I said, I wish that I had just followed the pattern to begin with. Sometimes modifications really work out and sometimes they don't. And I guess when they don't, you just have to be willing to go back and get some, get it to keep coming back to it until you end up with something that you're truly happy with. 
and we'll actually get some wear out of because we invest so much of our time, our resources, our attention into these, into making these pieces. It's such a shame if, they, if we don't get any use out of them after all of that. So, so there we go. This is my Rocket Tea by Tanis Lavely. It's uh, fairly gone through the ringer, but I have now finally ended up with something I'm really happy with. And I absolutely would knit another one of these. In fact, I would knit another one, I think, entirely plain. Um, but I am actually considering knitting another one in a different, in a different colour combination. And uh, I would follow the pattern. <laughs> okay, next one. The next one I have for you is this beautiful one here, which is the Tin Roof Tea, and it's by Yamagara. And I love this. It's so beautiful. There is a lot of leeway for your own personal creativity because you'll see that this is not the same on this side as it is on this side. I'll show you the back. There we go. So you get to make up your stripes as you go and you get to do like a combination of, of yarns if you like. And so the combination of yarn that I've got here, this lovely coral colour here is by the Woolly Skein and it's a, a woolen, it's a linen cotton blend uh, called Chickadee. And then this is Drop Saffron, like I showed you from the Ranunculus. And then this is actually a merino nylon, superwash merino nylon blend from Rusty Ferret, which is a yarn dyer based up in Dundee, I think. And um, I've just, I had a very little amount of this left, but I thought it looked really good with the two colours of linen and cotton blends. And I'll put it on so that you can see. Uh, but I'm so pleased with how this worked out. I've worn this quite a lot. Yeah, it's quite a high neckline. And it's got such an interesting uh, construction. So you start at the sleeve and you knit, uh, in sh you use short rows to kind of create a bit of shaping. And then you have this beautiful kind of full cable, which then runs up. So you're knitting from the sleeve towards the center. And then you knit the back, you divide for front and back, you knit the back to the center, and then you knit the front to the center, and then you put all of that on hold. And then you come back and you knit the next sleeve with your shaping, your full cable, up to the middle of the back, up to the front. And then you do something called, you see this? A Russian join down the centre, which was very well explained and really easy to do and actually created this really lovely, very neat join between the two sides. And I'll show you on the back as well. And uh, once you've done that, you then pick up all your stitches around and then you knit down. So you're actually knitting in different different directions. So it's a hugely versatile pattern because of that, a hugely versatile design. So you can, you know, switch up your use of fabrics. You could actually knit this with longer sleeves if you wanted. You would just miss out this shaping and you could bring it down to say three quarter length and start your your full cable early and knit yourself a sleeve before you moved into the rest of the body. You can absolutely switch up the, the stripes and you can use as many colours as you like. This could be a great stash buster, I think. I would certainly knit another one of these. Or you could actually knit it all in one colour. Or you could colour block it. You know, you could knit one half in one colour, one half in another colour and use a different colour for your, for your hem which of course you can also knit as long as you want because you're just knitting um, garter in the round here before you come into, I think that looks like a twisted rib. So you could knit that a little bit longer as well if you wanted to, but uh, I think it's a super effective pattern. And uh, I really love how my hand dyed yarn here from Rusty Ferret sits 
um, against the wool, the, the linen and the cotton. I keep saying wool, but it's not. <laughs> so there we go. That is the Tin Roof Tea and it's by Yamagara. Uh, it came out a couple of years ago and I just think there's so many options. I would definitely knit another one of these. I think it could be really lovely. So, so there we go. Next one. Okay, next one is, again, it's another one of these that might not necessarily be considered good summer knitting, but I just wanted to show it to you because I think it kind of demonstrates again what I was saying about how to make what wouldn't be necessarily a summer knit into one. So this is my, one of my pink velvets. And again, I've knitted this with short sleeves. So this is knitted in Donegal Darnie, uh, which is a tweed yarn from, and I think I picked this up, at this is knit in Dublin. I think I bought it online during one of the iKnit7 events. And this mohair is another one of those Ching Fibre uh, spring, spring Club colorways. And I've held the mohair double to do the colour work for the pink velvet, for the yoke. And so again, it doesn't necessarily seem like this would be a summer knit, but by making it the shorter sleeves um, and, and keeping it actually as the woolly wool, it's a very effective piece. I can throw on a cardigan um, and then take it off if it gets a little bit warmer later on um, during the day, or certainly in the evening, I can bring a little shawl or a jacket with it. And, and it works very well for me. So I just want to kind of give you that because I want you to start thinking about other ways in which we can create summer knits. We don't necessarily have to look for those summer patterns that are coming out, although I'm going to share, you, share with you some beautiful ones. You can go through your library at your, of patterns that you already have and you can start to make some modifications. So for doing a short sleeve, I basically would eliminate all of the instructions up to here, I would see how many stitches I need um, to, um, to connect to the, to the yoke, which will be detailed in the pattern. And then that's the number of stitches I've cast on. So it's super easy. And then, uh, in fact, I think with this pattern, it's not knitted bottom up, it's knitted top down, so which makes it even, even easier. So you're just picking up your stitches for your yoke, for your sleeve, and not making any shaping. And I will show you a top that I did do shaping on and have regretted it. But with this, there's no shaping to the sleeves. So there's still plenty space. Um, it's a good, art, a good uh, sleeve circumference. And then just added in a little uh, rib to match the, the collar and the hem. So it's, it's really easy modification. And uh, that along with, if you wanted a yarn substitution, to a plant-based fibre, um, or perhaps to something with a silk content, uh, or one of those uh, lovely blends, then um, then it just kind of converts what would be seen as a heavier weight garment into a garment that can be worn all through summer. So there you go, pink velvet, Andrea Marie. Okay, <laughs> next one. <laughs> Who knew that my uh, my summer wardrobe was quite so extensive. This is the Duchesne and it's by Layla Raven. It, uh, this has a huge amount of positive ease. This is a garment that I wear when it is hot because it is entirely in linen. This is Kalinka, which is a four ply linen, which I have held double for this, you can see, which I've held double for this garment, this design. It's got this wonderful panel of lace, which you can see, I'll try and go up on my tippy toes so you can see better. As you can see, there's a lot of positive ease to this. It's not clinging to me at all. It's very cooling. The linen feels lovely on my body. The um, linen to knit with isn't actually a terribly pleasant experience. And that's just me, that's just my opinion, but it is so worth it because once you have the finished garment, it just softens and softens and softens the more you wear it and the more you wash it. It is just the perfect summer yarn, I think. 
And this pattern is just so cooling because you've got this big lace panel down the front. I think some people have knitted the same panel down the back, but mine is just plain. You can see the way that it's draping there. It really is beautiful. Um, I, I knitted this, gosh, maybe back in 2018. 2019, 2018. So it's had some wear, but um, actually this is slightly too cool a top. <laughs> it's uh, for, for the, the weather that we get. So um, I don't get many days when I can wear this in Scotland, but I will be going on my holiday soon and I will absolutely be taking this particular top with me because it really is so good in the hotter climates. So if you are in a hotter climate, and you are looking for something that might give you a little bit more coverage and um, then you might want to go for this and like I said I burn terribly so I really need something that gives me this extra coverage. So that's the Duchesne and it's by Layla Raven and it's knitted in Kalinka linen. Oh. <laughs> Next one. I'm developing a large pile of knits in front of me here. Uh, this one is, this is the Elton and it's by Hokey Locatelli. And again, it is the striped four ply with, uh, or striped, in this case, actually I've used merino lace weight, so I can't say four ply, but, and it's single ply. <laughs> so nothing about it is four ply actually. <laughs> But I have used single ply merino and I've paired it with some of my, uh, some of the mohair that I had left over from other projects in my stash. And I've tried to fade it, you know, kind of going from this kind of pale yellow to the variegated, which I think is cowgirl blues and the lace weight merino single is also cowgirl blues. This yellow is an Isaiah silk mohair. Then I've got a little bit of this lovely pale pink, and that is La Bien Aimé um, Mohair Silk in the colorway Dawn. And I'm pretty sure this last colorway here is uh, Rust from, and it's the, the Mohair Silk from Drops to finish that off. So I've just tried to kind of fade it, going from the lightest color down through the dark. It was quite difficult to figure out the exact placement of things to make sure that I had, you know, equal amounts of the of the yarn and to create a consistent fade. You can see on the back there. Uh, and it involved kind of looking at people's projects and counting, counting the stripes. <laughs> so, uh, so yes, it took me a while to figure it out, but I'm really glad I did. Mine has got the three quarter length sleeves. This is quite a lightweight cardigan. Uh, it's a nice piece just to kind of throw on. Because I've knitted it in lace weight, uh, it's a little, again, a little bit more open uh, gauge. And again, that makes it for me more of, a, more of a summer knit. I think I would like to knit another one of these and I would like to knit it in a larger size and, uh, and in kind of a slightly heavier weight um, yarn for the with the solid stripes um, but it's such a pretty such a pretty piece so I wanted to include it here because I don't wear this through the winter at all I only ever wear this in the summertime because it really isn't it doesn't give me enough warmth the rest of the year so so there we go so a good again another good stash buster because I really did use up all my mohair all my lovely mohair scraps that fitted this particular color uh, story and I've got these beautiful buttons that I think I picked up in, I think mum picked them up for me actually in France. So, so there we go. That is the Elton by Hohi Locatelli in lace weight cowgirl blues merino and various mohairs. Right, next one. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is the one that I did the sleeve shaping on that I wish I hadn't. This is the Tenya. This is also by um, Caitlin Hunter, who also did the White Horse. I have knitted this in Blacker Leoness, which is a wool linen blend. I'm not sure it's still 
available actually. I love this really strong sort of chartreuse green. Like the Plant Lady tea, it has the lace around the middle, although the lace is slightly deeper and it's a more cropped piece. So the lace for me really just kind of sits underneath the bust. I do like that this has got a little bit of positive ease for the, for the lace section and a bit less for the bust. What I do not like is the sleeves. And if I had more of the Leoness, I would actually take the sleeve back and re-knit it. Um, and that's because the pattern tells you, I'm not sure whether you'll see it, the pattern tells you to do sleeve decreases, which in retrospect, I don't think any short sleeves really need sleeve decreases because it has created this, if it, I mean, it fits, but it is tight and it didn't need to be. Um, so I find that a little bit disappointing. And I think because of that, I wear it slightly less than I should. I will also just point out that I do actually have some bob, I've not debobbled any of these before wearing them. Uh, but overall, it's bearing up pretty well, the fabric. Um, I just wish it wasn't so tight on the sleeve, but it's, uh, I think it's actually a really lovely shape. It's part of Caitlin Hunter's Nitaly season, uh, season range. And I think she's actually just brought out this year's, which looks like it's a colour work, a uh, short sleeved option. But I have actually knitted another one of Caitlin Hunter's uh, Nitaly, and I will show that to you next. I also knitted this one, which is her Maritimo tee. I've knitted this in fibre space. I think it's a scrumptious four ply. I cannot remember the colourway of the colourway name of the main colour, but this one here is called Peach Bellini. And then my, th my third contrast colour, which you can just see here, is actually a merino silk, and it was a mini from Tall Yarns, which I picked up as part of a fade set uh, at Edinburgh Yarn Festival quite a few years ago. <laughs> so I wear this one quite often because it looks really good with denim. Again, it's quite a uh, loose uh, gauge, not gauge, it's quite a lot of positive ease. I really love the lace work. Um, it's, I didn't on this occasion decide to do the arms, the sleeve shaping. Uh, I had learned my lesson from the tenure and uh, so the, the sleeves are much more comfortable to wear. Um, it is a wool that I've knitted this in. I think it's a wool nylon blend, I think. Uh, but it is, it's very comfortable and with the short sleeves, the positive ease and the bit of lace, um, it does actually keep me quite cool while keeping me also quite covered. <laughs> so there we go, that's the Maritimo and that's also by Caitlin Hunter. I think I just have one last garment to share with you, which is this one. Now this is knitted, I think it's in BC Garn Soft Silk DK, which is 100% silk, but it's kind of like the matte silk, kind of slubby. Uh, I love this top. I find it super easy to wear. It's uh, by B Mandarin's Melody Hoffman and it's called Ginkgo. It has a very wide neck and it has a higher front and a lower back. You can see it has these beautiful wide sleeves. And it did say to graft the sleeves, but uh, I am a horrible grafter. <laughs> and so uh, I did not graft the sleeves, I seamed them and actually it's worked out perfectly fine. Again, it's quite loose, uh, it's quite, got quite a lot of positive ease, so it's quite a loose, um, loosely worn garment. The design well, tells you to knit two I cords and attach them to either side here and then it gets tied 
So it kind of brings it in a little bit more at the front and stops it kind of falling off your shoulders. I never, I never ended up knitting those and I wear this a lot because it sits so well over the top of my dresses and things. I would absolutely knit another one of these. I really, really like this yarn. In fact, I liked it so much that I then bought some more and I'm about to show you what I knitted with that. But uh, I would absolutely knit this again in different colours. It is one of my most worn summer pieces. It's so cool because of the silk content. It drapes beautifully. I love the wide sleeves, the slightly more fitted body. Um, I really like the length of it as well. I can show you, it just comes to my waist. So it sits really nicely with dresses. Um, or again, I can wear it with longer um, camisoles and um, a pair of jeggings or leggings or like a short skirt or something. So. So yes, this is the Ginkgo by Melody Hoffman. It's one of her earlier designs. I knitted this quite a few years ago, actually when I was on holiday in a Scottish island. <laughs> and uh, I knitted it on the train on the way up and then sitting outside in the sunshine, watching otters play in the, in the water. So good memories attached to this, <laughs> to this particular knit. And like I said, I would knit another one. Actually, I really like to the um, garter uh, hem. I just think so many details on this are actually really beautiful. So yes, I would knit this one again. It is the Ginkgo Top by Melody Hoffman in BC Garn Soft Silk DK. So on to the accessories and there's not many of these. So we're gonna whip through them quite quickly. And if you have watched uh, the shawl wall episodes, then you will have seen these already. <laughs> so I did go back to, in fact, I think it was, I think I got them from My Little Mai, again in cognac, uh, the soft silk DK. And I got this wonderful shade of kind of mustard yellow, this gold. This is the Hipster Shawl by Hohe Locatelli. And I knitted it again quite a few years ago now. There's a wonderful project for this particular design that shows you how to do these beautiful little tassels. And, and, and I followed that and it did take a long time, uh, but it was absolutely worth it. I love them. There's something about fringing that just says summer. <laughs> but, um, but yes, this is a, a, again, a very well worn shawl for summertime. I take it out every summer because I can, if I am sitting outside, say at lunchtime or something, and I'm not covered by the shade, then I need to have something that I can pull out and just drape around my shoulders to stop me from getting um, too, too pink. <laughs> and uh, and this will do that perfectly without overheating me because it's got that, because it's 100% silk. So um, I really enjoy wearing this piece in the summer and because it's this wonderful shade of gold, it goes with so much of my summer wardrobe. A lot of my summer dresses um, will match this in kind of like dark greens and um, hot corals and, um, and it goes beautifully with black as well. Um, although black's not the best colour to wear in the summertime. <laughs> but there we go. That is the Hipster Shawl and it's by Hoki Locatelli and again it's in that BC Garn Soft Silk DK. Okay, another shawl. So this shawl I did not knit but I was given it for my 40th birthday by Jess who we're just about to go and meet and uh, this is knitted in Kalinka so it's the same yarn that my orange uh, Deshane is knitted in. This is Simmer Dim by Gudrun Johnson. I think it's a one skein project. It is such, I just, oh, the feel of linen on your skin is just so lovely. <laughs> so again, this is a great cover up piece. You know, this is a great piece that I can just throw on when I can start to feel the back of my neck or my shoulder starting to, starting to burn. Um, and because it's such a small um, accessory, I can throw it in my shopping bag or my handbag. And, uh, and just have it there with my, with my sunglasses. Very cool. <laughs> my sparkling water. <laughs> but uh, it's a really beautiful 
a beautiful little shawl and it's one again that I get a lot of wear out of throughout the summer months. One last one. We're going to get in this under an hour, folks. <laughs> this is the Tales of the Isle of Purbeck uh, shawl and it's by Annie Rowden. It was brought out as an MCAL, but I did not do it as an MCAL. I just bought it as a whole pattern. I don't really know how the MCAL worked because it is basically the same stitch pattern throughout the shawl, but you start off with a smaller version of it and you get an, a larger version towards the end. But that's fine. We're not doing it as an MCAL. We're, we're doing it as a, as a fully knitted, uh, a fully produced pattern. The yarn I bought from Ginger Twist, and we're going to go and see that yarn specifically. This is called Yakety Yak, and this is in the undyed colorway, which is this beautiful bronzy color. I think Yakety Yak is a blend of yak, merino, and silk. It feels beautiful. The yak is really lovely. It bears up really beautifully, the yak. So it still still looks as good as new, actually, this, this, this base. Um, so it feels lovely on the skin. And because it's this high, um, highly uh, lace worked pattern, it means that there's lots of holes in it, lots of, it's very lightweight and makes it an easy, an easy shawl just to throw on. So there we go. That is the Tales of the Isle of Purbeck by Annie Rowden in Ginger Twist, Yak to Yak. And now we're going to go to Ginger Twist. I'm going to introduce you to Jess and we're going to look at some summer patterns that are coming out and some that are in our queue and some beautiful summer yarns that she's stocking there. And I might even give you a wee tour of the shop as well. OK, my darlings, see you shortly. Hello, hello. Yeah. <laughs> this is my friend Jess. Hi, Jess. Hi, Amy. <laughs> Jess has the wonderful Ginger Twist studio yes. and that's where we are right now. So we've got an amazing array of yarns uh, which you can see behind us. These are uh, Ginger Twist hand dyed and so we're going to be touching on some of those, literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we also have lots of other yarns which you can't see right now but we've chosen a selection to share with you. And we've got a number of patterns which are in our queue or mm -hmm. are about to be added to the queue. Yeah. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna touch on those too. So does that sound good? Sounds great. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of giggling. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and bring on images of each of the designs that we're talking about so that you can see them too. And like I said, we've got a, an array of yarns to share with you that we would pair with these particular patterns. So Without further ado, because we've got a lot of patterns to go through, yes. <laughs> we might not get through all of them, but we'll see how we get on. So the first one was Hokey Locatelli's Staple Linen Tea, which is in a sport weight linen. It's knitted with negative ease, so it kind of clings a bit more to the body, mm -hmm. unlike a lot of summer knitted patterns, actually, which yeah. most of them have got positive Lots ease. Lots of positive ease, yeah. Uh, so yes, we were thinking, what were we thinking we would knit? I think the Kalinka. the Kalinka, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this is the Kalinka 21, and this is a blend of, we've got more colors, but this is a blend of wool and silk. Or, <laughs> wool and linen. Wool and linen, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the other fiber. Um, yeah, Amy really liked this I shade, do, eh? I love. Well, do you know, this is very similar to my Tenya. <gasps> you know, yes. that I knitted it, yes, it so is. I just love uh -huh, this color. Uh -huh. This is a good color for mm. me. I might leave with this one. <laughs> I think this is such a good red. It is a true red. red. Yeah, a very true it? red. Like a proper cherry. Yeah, it's mm. hard. I feel like it's hard to find. But anyways, yeah, I thought yeah, that would be a good, a good match for um, that top. And the or and yes, or, and or. Um, we've got the Gossipium Cotton Tweed. Um, that's by Erica Knight. Uh, we've got it in quite it's quite nice. a few colors, yeah. but here's just. Uh, you, but a nice selection. That's a beautiful tobacco and I love oh, the kind yeah. of flecks of the yes. blue in it. Oh, it's, it's really so, unusual. So nice. Yeah, so unusual yeah. for uh, cotton. Absolutely. Like to, have little, to have a tweed. Yeah, yeah. a nice little tweedy bit. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that would gorgeous. work really well for, for summer. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm. I think that is such a lovely top and it looks like 
you could wear it at lots of different occasions as well. Like you could yeah. wear it just for like everyday wear, or I think you totally. could really dress it up for going yeah. out in the evening. I think it'd be a good transition piece as well. Like going into autumn, you could throw Absol a cardigan over Absolutely. it. Absolutely, or, or wear like a wee long sleeve tee underneath yes. it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like it's got like a twisted rib panel that mm -hmm. goes down, down the, the center. down the front. So probably would need to wear something underneath. <laughs> probably, anyways. Yeah, that, that's Woo! how I would wear it anyway. But I mean, you know. we're not here to tell you. <laughs> How do, how I, do I wear it? <laughs> well, the next one, I would say we would probably need to wear something underneath. Well, I would wear something underneath it, which What's is a Sealy's top. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's rather open work lace <laughs> all over. It could be like hippie lingerie, though. It, uh, yeah. Do you know, I was thinking it would be really nice at the poolside, you know, like as <gasps> totally. something to like throw over the top of your swimsuit. Absolutely. I thought that would be. And it, yeah, yeah. it's in, um, it's also in linen. So it's in the yes. Kalinka, actually. Yeah. Which I am sorry, I have one and I didn't bring it. Um, <laughs> and I'm totally knitting forgot. one and I'm not very yeah. far through it. So. <laughs> But oh, I loved it. I mean, I found it a wee bit tricky to get my head around all those because it was a lot of wraps, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's it is. It's very holy. You gotta it, make that space. It is. I mean, like every third, oh, sorry, every fourth row is your lace row, and you're yeah. passing stitches mm -hmm. over to kind of create the the large eyelets. Yeah. Um. So that is in two colors. Yes. I mean, I didn't pick out any. Oh, you could do it in one. I did mine in one. Be, okay. Yeah, yeah. I did mine in very si like two very similar yeah. colors. It's like dark purple and black. Oh, no. Sorry. I did. I'm all thrown off. I did do mine in two oh, colors. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're so with it. We have had a coffee. Um, Maybe we should have had another. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Yes. I did my. I'm doing mine in like a dark purple and a hot pink. Oh my god! <laughs> Amazing. Actually, look at it. I would quite like those, those two, two together. Would be really nice together. I actually. didn't. I didn't intend that when I, I pulled these from be, the shelf. But would be lovely. I have already done a summer top in this. It's a like a years ago. proper rosebud. Yeah. Yeah. Pink. yeah. So the lovely. beautiful thing about linen is that it just feels so nice to wear and it, it really softens does. up and mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, you know, when they first start knitting with it, feel quite nervous yeah. because it's like, I don't think I'm going to like wearing this uh -huh. and so then it puts them off, Absolutely. you know, the knitting process And I it. think linen feels most of the time unforgiving, it's quite mm. hard, like especially these, the Kalinka, it's quite hard in the skein, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, once you, the more you wash and wear it, the better it Absolutely. gets. Like, oh. Do you recommend just throwing it in the washing machine, like your linen, or do you? I do haven't. It? Yeah, I haven't either. I've always hand washed it, but I. Uh, yeah, I've all, but now I'm now I'm wondering. I, like. you, I mean, you could. <laughs> I can't think why you couldn't, but we won't recommend it just in case. Yeah, but. just in case. <laughs> Um, I mean, I usually always, the way I wash my woolens, I soak them in the bath and then yeah. I put them in the machine though right. to just spin. So on a high spin. Yeah, yes. that's it. No water added, yes. just to get it out. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I have added water and that was a... Oh we're, my we're, God. Back to, we're back to the Kingston sweater here. Which <laughs> oh my God. Well, when I was in, visiting my family over Christmas yeah. in Oregon, I, I wasn't familiar with yeah. their, wash, their fancy oh, washing machine. Oh no. And I put it in and I thought I'd put it on just a spin. And then, though, I was like, why is it adding water? Oh my God. And it was like warm as well. I was like, stop, oh, it, stop. No. <laughs> Everything was okay. No knitwear was lost. And they tried to pull the door open. Oh my God. Well, it was one of the, it's a top loading one. So I, or it was locked, but it was like clear and I could see. Oh and no. And I'm like, ah, it's like a horror movie. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. So yes, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> um, yeah, so Sally's. Sally's, absolutely. Sally's or Sally's. I'm not, I'm never sure. No, I'm not sure either. By Anna Maltz. Yeah. It is a beautiful, very, very oversized. Lots of positive views. Yes. Because mm -hmm. I knitted, I had cast on for the size three. Uh-huh. And then realized that I had uh, twisted my cast on oh my God. after the sixth row. Oh, and then ouch. I had to rip it all out. But when I took it off the needles, it gave me a sense of what the circumference was yeah. for a size three. That's great. It was. 
<laughs> so I cast on a size two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is four which inches smaller, which I don't think is going to. I think you've done a. I checked your pattern, uh -huh. your oh, project. Right. You did a size two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it because is because I was like, you're the only other person I know that's that's knitted it. Yeah, so yeah. then I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to check and see what. Uh -huh. what and it definitely has lots of positive oh, things. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't probably want more on that. Yeah. No, I absolutely. mean, as it is, like you know, it's very swingy, especially yeah. with the linen, which yeah. is really lovely. Because it then drapes so beautifully. It drapes so beautifully, yeah. but then you don't want to get caught on things, <laughs> as I've experienced. <laughs> on the door handle, yeah, the way past. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, our door handle, <laughs> the door handles in my flat are really like they just come, they just feel like they come out, and they're at such a harsh angle, and I all, and they're up high as well. So I always tend to get caught on yeah. um, going back. Sounds like you need a trip to B and Q, love. Oh, oh God, don't, don't. For some door handle yes. replacement. <laughs> But yeah, so it uses these two colors, so you, you have to choose, like, and they, t yeah. they say to choose like a darker color for color A and a lighter color for color B to exaggerate yeah. the kind of optical illusion uh -huh. that, that the lace kind of creates. But yeah. I mean, I looked through the project pages and you know, people, some people have followed that yeah. and other people have chosen colors which are quite close uh -huh. in tone. I mean, mine's value. really, mine are really close mm. and I mean, I, and I love stunning. it. Yeah. Yours is absolutely beautiful. Yours is what inspired me to cast oh. mine up. <laughs> That's so nice. I don't think there's anything else that I would recommend for sillies just because we have the yeah no absolutely yarn. well we've got the um humble summer top next mm -hmm. which is the irene lynn one with that's oh yeah yeah the really swingy one yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah so yeah. it's kind of color blocked yes. so it's um horizontally mm -hmm. so you've got like the stripe and then you've got almost like it's not quite a peplum but it's like, yeah, you know it yeah. does seem to have increases as you move down through the body to it kind so it looks more fitted at the top and less fitted at the bottom, mm -hmm. but it, like an umble, I suppose. Yes, I suppose. <laughs> Where the name came from. <laughs> but it's a really beautiful pattern. In fact, I would say Irene Lynn has lots of really beautiful patterns. She so, so does. It's oh. uh, particularly, I think, for summer. So yeah, yeah definitely yeah. worth checking out her other mm. patterns. I've not knit anything by her yet, mm -hmm. but I've definitely kept an eye on her Instagram. Well, she knitted this, or her sample is in fingering weight right. linen. Well, it's the Isaiah. Bomelin, oh, which right. I think yeah, is a yeah. linen blend. Uh -huh. Not quite. Well, hang on, let me check and see what it is a blend of. Uh, excuse me while I check. <laughs> 65% cotton, 35% linen. Oh, so it's right. a linen yeah, cotton yeah. blend. Uh -huh. So what do you think we would I use would for that? I probably, I don't have a commercial yarn for that, but I would probably go for mm. one of the hand dyes. Absolutely. Either so these ones are all the merino silk. Can you imagine like three colours? Three color, I mean all of them the three next to each other like those three. <laughs> I know. Those three. Or those like look or the, at those. Oh, Oh or like gosh. you could, or you could really bring in like a strong pop, like yes. the bright, it's yeah. brighter than Barbie, isn't it? It is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a skin of that. <laughs> oh, or you could go for some blues, or uh, absolutely, mm. or like some really kind of like hot colors as well. Oh, I, l I just love pink and orange. I so, so do much I. together. So do yeah, I. Yeah, yeah. So this would be really swingy, really drapey. Absolutely. Super summery. Um, or also the sweet flax is really nice. Mm. Um, so that is a blend of <laughs> baby baby alpaca, um, silk and linen. It's so it's got that linen beautiful content. blend. Yeah. I mean it just it's gorgeous. Mm. So you do have the the orange. Oh look, <gasps> those would be funny. Eh? That is absolutely beautiful. Mm. Oh. And I don't, I, the yakety yak would also work very nicely. Yeah. I don't have a lot of colors in that at yeah. the moment, but that is merino yak and silk. So yeah. really drapey. And, and actually I, I, I just showed them my beautiful unlived oh! yakety yak yeah, yeah. Um, shawl. Uh -huh. In fact, that was the last thing I showed before I came here. So. Ah! <laughs> Perfect. Fresh perfect memories. little segue. Yeah, yeah. That's no, good. absolutely. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. pattern and it's been on, I mean, I think earlier on just maybe last month mm -hmm. she shared like a number of her patterns and so I think I went and favorited most of them so uh -huh. I just I just picked that one for today but <laughs> there's a few in the queue oh so nice isn't it amazing 
how summer knitting has really kind of come on. I mean, yes. like if you just even go back, say like five years or so, like the choices for oh, summer were dire. Absolutely. You know, there was nothing. just like nothing really mm -hmm. there. And I remember getting, remember, this makes me so terribly old. I remember getting the Rowan um, magazine. Mm -hmm. And of course it came out like for, there was an autumn, winter, and there was a spring, summer. Yeah. And the spring, summer, was never as mm. as good as the autumn yeah. winter one and i still have all of them so i was like looking through them to uh -huh. kind of go like well where was summer knitting in the 90s yeah <laughs> nowhere no 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 really <laughs> whereas when i was putting together this list mm -hmm. i mean i felt like i mean i have this is a relatively long list yeah but it could have been could like have been about so five more. times longer yeah i yeah, was yeah. i was really quite discerning guys mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, oh, it's hard, but it has come. I mean, I very personally feel very inspired for some reason this year to like, I need more summer knits. I always feel like I have a good stash of them, but um, I always like to wear something knitted in the shop. And absolutely, it gets Which warm makes in here. Total sense, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. so. I'm really well, inspired. The next one we've got is this beautiful <gasps> mm. folded lace tank by Bristol Ivy. So beautiful. Bristol Ivy is such a imaginative designer. Yeah. Like she puts things together in just mm -hmm. the most incredible way. And she had that book out a yes. while ago. Is out it of, out of the box? Out of the box. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she is such an out of the box designer. It was yes. such an on brand <laughs> book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this particular tank, you know, with its folding like the at pleats. the at the pleats and and just one shoulder, uh -huh. so you've got the asymmetry, yeah. and then you've got the lace inside the pleats. So I mean, it's just so it's like pretty. a little surprise almost as it, it swings. Is. And Absolutely, mm -hmm. and I think that's in that's in a sport weight. Oh, yeah. So you have some beautiful hand dyed sport weight. I actually, no, I think the I think the alpaca silk will maybe be yeah. too. I don't know. It might be too heavy. Too heavy. So mm -hmm. I would go with the pinup sport. Oh, it's a beautiful which, base. I'll just grab. I didn't think to grab a few few of these colors, <laughs> but I'll just grab grab a few. Um, I wish you could see. Like this is just such a small selection. Yeah. Is, I will show you. I'll do I'll do a tour afterwards so a you can. Tour. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh, far <laughs> we, we very wee shop, but um, this is a blend of merino and nylon, yeah. and it's a high twist. Um, so it'll have great stitch definition Absolutely. for that lace. Oh yes, that um, and it still has a really nice drape. Yeah. Um, Do you I, think that's because of the twist? I think it's just because of the merino, maybe yeah. the merino, but yeah. I don't know. I think it. Well, it has nice drape, but it has nice structure. Yeah. I think will work really well for yeah, this top. Absolutely. I love this orange so much. It's such a beautiful. What's the orange called? Melon balls on Melon fire. Melon balls on fire. Yeah. Or oh, <laughs> this pink. I'm just in love. I know. It's so delicate. But yeah. actually, that's one of your more slightly variegated shades. <gasps> yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of the the colors that you do are are quite mm -hmm. tonal. Yep. Um, like that one. Well, yeah. I mean, that's got that's some. La that's lolly. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. <laughs> So good. so good it is so beautiful oh, but yeah that did turn out and yeah. it's funny how you know on different bases absolutely it that it takes you and that's one of the mm -hmm. wonderful things about coming into jesse's shop mm -hmm. actually is that you get to see the same color on different bases yes. and how the different bases have taken the dye yeah. and it's just i mean they're just exquisite it's so yeah, yeah it's really lovely i when i first or in my earlier days of dyeing mm -hmm. and getting like different bases i had this idea where i was like oh no i need to have these colors will be on this base mm -hmm. and then these colors will be on this base and then i've had people like oh i love this color but, but I, want I want it on <laughs> this yarn and i was like well no you can't and like, you're like well, I don't that's do inconvenient <laughs> yeah but now i'm like oh no i need to have all the same co like all the colors on all the bases to give people the option, the option. yeah absolutely yeah. And, and it's just and nice to see well look at this yeah i mean absolutely do you know if you're ever in need of a little sort of color lift you should yeah, just come yeah. in and like observe the rainbow yes. <laughs> it's good it is mm -hmm. and on in edinburgh we get a lot of gray days and this yeah. is an absolute antidote to yes. all of that Absolutely. and in fact i should say too is if you're not in edinburgh you can still observe the rainbow because jess has a wonderful instagram mm, which is you. uh ginger twist studio ginger twist studio mm -hmm. you wonder. must go and check it out because you post really regularly yeah i try to and you share a lot of samples and a mm -hmm. lot of your stock yeah and, yeah and of course all of this wonderful yes the, the rainbow waterfall <laughs> of, of yarn yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so next one that we have is the Roman Holiday Tank oh. by Sari, Sari. Nordland, mm -hmm. who, mm -hmm. who is a, another designer who has really developed her oh, catalogue yes. of summer knits. Mm -hmm. I mean, just so many beautiful yeah. ones. Uh, she's got the Kutar tea. She's just brought out the Foxberry tea as well. She has the Riento. Riento and she's got some really cool um, like tanks as well with beautiful lace down the back. Down the back. And, mm -hmm. um, just really, really lovely. Yeah. But this particular one is actually quite um, plain, yeah. but with some really stunning details. Oh, it's so and beautiful. it's just so clever, I think, with this little bit of garter mm -hmm. just at the just at the V at yep. the front and at the back and then the shaping around it just to kind of really uh, augment that and, yeah. and draw attention it's just really lovely mm -hmm. but Definitely it's, my, it's on my list now our DK weight pattern yeah, out, yeah. Of all, out of our list <laughs> so I think we were gonna yeah, that. share this. Mm -hmm. This is oh, just it'd be so beautiful in either one of those. Eh? I'm gonna hold this up yeah. so we can see it more clearly. It's like a blushy pinky beige. I dyed it with yeah. avocados. Like a light gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And then, and just then the there's cream. the plain, which is well, which is not plain at all. Yeah, not plain at all. <laughs> They're so shiny. It's like ivory. And just uh -huh. to show you the two together, so that you can holding my phone so I can mm -hmm. keep a track of all of these patterns but there we go you can kind of see the difference in the in the shades oh, I think it would work so well oh, and that. this has got such a gleam to it yes Do you know it's mm -hmm. like it's it's got a beautiful sheen and it's quite a loose ply yeah which I think will I haven't knit with it yet but I think it would give a really interesting texture I think it this would. is by the way the Pima cotton DK mm -hmm. yes. is what it's called so I've just yeah. got it in these two shades um, mm -hmm. I'd like to, probably won't happen this summer, but maybe, mm -hmm. maybe in the new year, I'd mm -hmm. like to get more colors. But yeah. cotton, you need different dyes for cotton well, than this you is, do with... Well, this is the natural dye yeah. in yes. avocado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'd like to, but I'd like to do more natural dyeing, um, mm -hmm. at home, not mm -hmm. in my dye studio, because natural dyeing takes so much longer. Yeah, it's a much more <laughs> intensive process. Yes, you have to leave, it feels like you have to leave things to set for longer and... Yeah. Anyways, but I'd like to develop yeah. some more colors. But I think the um, the sample for a Roman holiday is actually in like a, a shade of ivory. Yes, it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's. I think she says something like, um, when she's in doubt about what to wear, she asks, "What would Audrey wear?" I think Audrey would Audrey wear Prima Cotton. Yeah, Audrey <laughs> would wear Prima Cotton, no doubt. She would. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's such a classy base. Oh, oh, oh I do think. <laughs> I mean, just to show you different, a different vibe. This is the also a DK. Oh, look um, at these colors! This is the Splendor Splendor DK. How nice would one of that? Be? And that's like merino silk. Yeah, yeah. half and half merino yeah. silk. Look at this! Isn't that just absolutely exquisite? Mm. <laughs> Well, I always thought oh, merino silk, it's so delicate, like it's not mm. going to wear well. But for some reason, I mean, I have i have a cardigan in this space yeah, yeah. Um, that I've had mm, for probably about seven, eight years. And I've worn it really steadily yeah. and, and, it's, and it's great. Yeah. I mean, I wore it the other brilliant, day. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. still wears. Do you know, silk is actually an incredibly durable yeah, yeah. Uh, fiber, mm. actually, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. absolutely. Definitely. That would be lovely. It's got again. It's got a really beautiful sheen, sheen. to it. That would, I think this again. This is one of those patterns that you could completely switch up your mm -hmm. yarn substitution for totally. and go like high lux yeah. on it. Totally. And it would be like an amazing evening piece. Oh you my know, god! Wouldn't it? And you could <gasps> just like. And again, it's like because it would if it, in like the merino silk yeah you could like literally just throw it into your suitcase and bring it out and i'm just it would picturing look. it with like your i was just thinking of your skirt your silk skirt that you oh, wore to that yes. wedding oh wouldn't like it be beautiful like that would be gorgeous. oh dear <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. goes the, this monthly yeah. <laughs> oh but both options are so yeah so lovely absolutely mm. either of those would Oh no, I'm I'm work. in a right pickle. Oh, our, our queue is changing all the time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking, I don't know. I want to cast on a ne the next summer thing for myself. Mm -hmm. 
which I was going to do another manis, but now oh, I'm like, yeah. oh, maybe I need I to know put something. I've got too many choices. I know, too many, <laughs> too much. Well, hopefully you'll have lots of choices yeah. as well. <laughs> Well, the next one that we wanted to look at was the souffle by Laura Penrose. <gasps> Wait, though. Oh, we didn't say any. Were we going to say about the elements in that one? Oh, or yes. No, no or we, 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 we could. Or we could do that with the last. Oh, let's do that one. Okay. Yeah. We've, we've got more. Never sure. mind. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the souffle, because <gasps> we were going to talk about yes. this yarn here, this which trolley. you can't see. Oh, yeah, it's too low. It's I'm too like, low. this glorious <laughs> trolley. <laughs> I will show you the glorious yeah, trolley yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but before then, I, we will pull some out to show you. Oh, <laughs> so, God. honestly. Oh, gee. This is ginger root. So these ones are called Leading Lady Lace. Um, they're a mohair silk, kid mohair silk. Um, just all the colors. And this is hot. brighter than Barbie. Yes, because it is. It oh, is I brighter love than brighter Barbie. than Barbie. <laughs> and then, so then the the second shelf is all like blues and greens and yeah. sort of grays. I know. And also, oh. so I'm oh, just and out, yellow. I'm just going to pull out all the brightest yes, colors yeah, I yeah. can find. Liquid sunshine. How nice are these together? I know. Look. Oh my God. How nice are all those <gasps> together? I wonder. I just. Oh. I'll just take all of these, Jess. That's fine. I just want. <laughs> I want like, you know, the, um, oh, what was that? The, um. The humble summer the top. Umble, I know it's not meant to be in this weight, and it might but, be too floaty, but I just love... I think you could totally do that. And in fact, there's another pattern from the new pom-pom. Is it called the cloud bow? That uses mohair yeah. single. Yes. That would be Was really that the... Fun. Oh, I don't know. There is one in the new pom-pom. I forget what it's called, but it's the one that has like the little collar and the little cuffs in foreplay, mm. and then the body's and all then the done body is all in done. single... Mohair, yeah, so there are so good. many beautiful mohair patterns yes. and your selection honestly is just <laughs> I don't know why I held I held off so long you did I kept asking yes. I kept saying are you going to be doing on someone on a mohair base and I don't know why I <laughs> held off because then once I opened the floodgates so well then all of uh, all of this <laughs> came, came through so. <laughs> oh it's so beautiful it it's is absolutely exquisite in fact I'm going to show um, the, what's it called, the Lally Brock as well. Because oh, yeah. It, it's, it's so rich on this lovely Sony. on it, isn't it? Here, don't worry about it. I'll okay. Just that one, <laughs> Look at this. That's the Lally Brock. Which you might recognize the name of. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> From uh, Outlander. Outlander. Uh, but it's just an exquisite kind of really so jammy mm. black currant almost, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Or a or a Merlot. Yes, Merlot. <laughs> yes. Maybe a Cabernet. Yes. No, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful glass of red. <laughs> Absolutely oh. gorgeous. So yes, the souffle top uses mm -hmm. one strand mm -hmm. and then it switches to two strands for the rest Does of it? the body. Oh, I didn't realize that'll give it a nice yeah, little which, weight. which means it's like sheer on the top uh -huh. and so actually I think it kind of gives the impression of like somebody wearing a corset even. Do you know? Because yeah. you would have like the sheer on top mm -hmm. and the opaque around the, around the body. Mm -hmm. It's knitted at quite a loose, uh, well it, quite, with quite a lot of positive ease. Yeah. Not like as much as Sealy's. No. But <laughs> But it does have some positive ease. Yeah. But I also have seen some testers, I think, do it with uh, with zero ease, and oh, it right. also looked really nice oh. as well. I think it would look really nice, like tucked in a skirt. Mm. Be quite nice, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. And again, it's like a really lovely evening piece. Yes. I am getting more and more into after doing the the top, you know, in the alpaca rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been thinking a lot about evening knitwear, uh -huh. and I think this is. Maybe that'll be your next you know? super special well, maybe episode. Be. I'll have to get knitting then because yes. I think I've got one, maybe two items. It'll be a much shorter episode. Yes. <laughs> I'll need to work up to that one. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yes, absolutely. I think this is a, and it's actually Laura's first garment pattern. Is it? It is. Oh, wow. And she's now brought out like a range of souffles. Uh -huh. So she's got like the chunky souffle, and I think she's got the summer souffle top okay. as well. Uh -huh. um, and she's brought out the souffle for little ones as well. So you, just FYI. Jess has the most gorgeous little one She's that would so look cute. amazing in a zippy. Oh my god! 
my god! Can gosh. you imagine matching suit suitcase? Oh my god! Okay, okay this is something oh, that list. needs to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yep. So the other thing is, it's got a little um, like uh, button at the back the and a little keyhole, keyhole I love a keyhole. which I just think is so classy. It is it so is. classy. And then the little ruffle, I think, is added on as at the at the end okay. to kind of differentiate between the sheer yeah. and the opaque. Mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah just beautiful mm. but that's not the only thing on our queue that uses mohair Mo yeah we've gone a bit mad with the mohair i think the floodlight <sighs> yes now the floodlight tea is by tanis lavely and who did the rocket tea uh, which you might remember oh, i have featured she? several yes, times yes, yes. Uh, -huh. uh so the rocket tea uses i think basically it's like one skein of four ply and one skein of mohair and I think this one you could most sizes mm -hmm. is two skeins of four ply and one of mohair okay. because she stripes in the mohair up the top, and then the rest of it is is opaque yeah. with the with the four ply. Mm -hmm. And we were thinking this would be really beautiful with the sweet flags. Yes, yes. So like it you would, would choose like a color that would I mean in the sample she really kind of blends it. Yeah. So the mohair is the same color mm -hmm. as the. Which as you a totally sweet could flax, do that. Which you could totally do yeah. with Jesse's yarn yeah, yeah, because yeah. as we were just saying about dyeing across the bases. And um, I'm like, what if you did something so I like I really You like did a fun. contrast. That would also be those really would be nice. quite fun. <laughs> can I can I see in brighter, brighter than Barbie? Brighter than Barbie. Yes. <laughs> I seem to have an obsession going on here. Look at this. I you see I have brighter than Barbie in the massum. Four ply. Yes, uh -huh. and I've got it paired with the undyed for a yoke <gasps> sweater later oh. this year. But um, but look at these two colours together. Oh, you could go really neutral. This is bourbon you and water. Could. Oh, bourbon and water is a lovely so classy. one. It would. Mm. Evening wear. <laughs> yes, more <laughs> evening wear. More evening wear. Absolutely. Um, or oh. you could go with the splendor. Oh yeah. And. Mm -hmm. You Some could shortcake. go for a, a short cake, a strawberry shortcake. Short strawberry shortcake. <laughs> that would be very beautiful too. But there's just so many options, I think, with yeah. the floodlight tea. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you had like some leftover mohair, because it really doesn't use very yeah. much, mm -hmm. then you could probably, if you had some leftover from another project, find something to you match could it with. Find something in your stash that you could match it up mm -hmm. with, or you could come in and you could get get another yarn to match it yes. with. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how my stash works. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm gonna, yes. I'm going to use up this small amount of scrap, so I need to buy like two full skeins to go with it, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Absolutely. really important I use up this like 25 gram uh, well, mohair. So satisfying, <laughs> eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, then the other mohair pattern that we've got is the Manus. <gasps> yes. Which, da da da. I've got a sample <laughs> of. As soon as Jess saw this, she knew she had to cast it on, and I love your color choices. Oh. I mean, well, as I was oh. saying to Amy, this is just, a lot of the samples I knit for the shop are just out of the seconds pile that are, mm. like, not quite per, well, not that any, a hand dyes cane is perfect in its imperfections. Absolutely. But this has maybe got some imperfections that I don't approve of, so, like, <laughs> this one has some, like, more white sort of white spot but I think it just still you know, looks I think great. it looks like a night sky do you know like with yeah. all of the stars yes I think it, I think yeah. it's beautiful I mean and then this one had some different spots in it but you can't even I they mean can't even you can it. never tell <laughs> when you actually knit it knit it up but this is the quality um, control that yes, you go through <laughs> exactly quality control and is this the sweet flax yes yes, yes. so this is combining oh. the sweet flax four ply this at the bottom so and leading lace um leading lady lace at the top yeah that's tape can I hold it up yeah yeah, go just ahead. to show the um, definition in it because it's just so lovely and it's got such you'll see it's got like a really beautiful drape yes which when weight. added to this mm -hmm. like mohair because if it was all mohair it would be beautiful but it would just but more it, fly away exactly whereas this really kind of creates like the the weight mm -hmm. the gravity on it which yeah. means that it just drapes beautifully. But it's the perfect amount of weight as well i mean she just yeah. measured that so yeah. well, yeah. Like if it was, you like know, the if it ratio went to, yeah, the it. ratio. Yeah, that's absolutely, the word. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yes, yes, I already want to do another one of these. Oh, I picked out, I <laughs> picked out some more. Yeah, yeah. Here's the next one. So this <laughs> is I'm gonna do millions of peaches for the top, 
and then peaches for free. No, millions of peaches. Peaches for me. Look out! Yeah. Um, and then Splendor Four Ply in Moon River. Um, oh, that is bottom. such a beaut. That's going to be stunning. I think it'll just be. I quite like the high contrast. Absolutely. I was thinking for my second one that I'd maybe pick colors that are more similar, like mm -hmm. in the same palette. But mm -hmm. then these were in the seconds pile, and I just I was like, oh, these yeah. look great together. Yeah, absolutely. That'll do. Absolutely. Yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And when and so this is sorry we should have said this is a pattern by Yamagara. Yes. Who yeah. is another amazing designer of summer knits. Yep. I mean she's got I mean and not just summer knits. She's mm -hmm. got lots of lovely patterns. But and she's been really churning some out lately. She has. She has. Well she did that tin roof tee that I did mm. which is knitted um across from the yes. sleeves and into the center mm. and then you knit a lot you pick up your stitches along the hem and knit down yep. so it's like you know moving in different directions Absolutely, it's really is interesting fun, fun knit mm -hmm. and such a fun way to use up like a variety of yarns from your Absolutely. stash as well um yeah this like this would be great with stash yeah. yarns yeah. as well because it, yeah, it doesn't absolutely it doesn't use like a much. lot does it mm -hmm. i was surprised yeah um and at the same time she brought out lapis <gasps> right because this was Manus, yes, wasn't Manus. it? And mm -hmm. then Lapis was the other one. And it's, it looks similar, but I think the construction's really quite different. Okay, I haven't even looked really looked at the... Um, I just saw Manus yeah. and I was like, yeah. right, tunnel vision. <laughs> it was the moon. <laughs> yes. So the Lapis is the one that's got the variegated <gasps> yarn at the bottom. Right. It's all knitted in four ply. Yeah. But again, it's this kind of... It's got a similar shape to it, mm -hmm. but it's got this real kind of focus around, around the... the middle yeah. part of it yeah yeah um around the the hem and mm -hmm. it's just absolutely i will beautiful. say this this design manis is so clever but you do use a lot of needles for it oh do you yeah so if you have you know a set of needles it's great <laughs> like you just then yeah. mo move through them but yeah if you're having to buy buy you know all of the needles it is a, an investment but absolutely. um but it's worth it yeah. <laughs> you'll need them anyway <laughs> and on that note just sells high high shorts. I do, yes. <laughs> Which is mostly exclusively what I use. Yeah. I use the Chaya yeah, for yeah. for shawls, like uh -huh. the fixed laces, because I love the cable on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. But I use the high high shorts. They're just else. my favorite. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're so good. Yeah, they're so good. Okay, so next one. Gosh, we're fairly zipping through them. We've got we have so, <laughs> such a list. So, many. so this is actually the last garment, and it's the outline tee. Is it already the last? It is already the last garment. <laughs> well, the outline tee, which mm -hmm. actually would, might be lovely with the elements. <gasps> yes. Yeah. Let's show. So show let's show you the there's elements. Just a few colors of those. There are. So, there's a, like another four or five colors. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice, nice selection. But it's like I love this pink. I think it's called Blossom. Is it called Blossom? No, it's not. It's called Seashell. Oh, oh Ellen, <laughs> is it a DK? Yeah, it is. Oh, well, oh, this, wait, are this we... is a fingering weight. Oh, oh no. Don't, don't use <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you can use the elements for... For the Roman holiday. Yeah, for Roman holiday. Actually, nice. oh my goodness. Can you imagine <gasps> a Roman holiday in that... Oh, in that dusty seashell. Dusty pink? Mm. That would That'd be, be so absolutely nice. beautiful. <laughs> okay, back on so, track. Back on track. <laughs> so the outline tee is by Jessie Mead, <gasps> yes. and it's the one with the dropped stitches down the front yeah. and along the sides. Yeah, yeah. But wait, so, wasn't that, was it one strand of fingering? It's one strand of fingering, okay. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So what would we use? What, do, mm. what would we think? I, I think the yak tee. The yak tee, yak. I know I don't have that many <laughs> colors in it at the moment, but I'll just bring, bring what we have. that I do. Now this is such a beautiful base. Can you tell us again what the what so the it's merino is? merino yak and silk. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a really nice round twist, so it's good for stitch definition. Um, it has some nice drape swinginess, and there's your brighter than Barbie on <laughs> the yak base. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't have very many colors in it at the moment. But this is, it does have such a nice depth. To it. it really does, and that's because this is the undyed, isn't yes. it? Yes, yeah. So unlike, for example, the merino silk, like which with is the splendor, so this is brighter than Barbie mm -hmm. on, which has got the white base, and this is, you'll see, it's really quite a different shade, yep. and that's because this is the undyed, I'll hold it close, and it's this beautiful kind of bronze. Yeah. I just love this. this well, so this is beautiful. what I knitted the, the mm -hmm. shawl in. And what I have to tell you, I think that because of the yak content, possibly, mm -hmm. it's so durable. Yes. It looks yeah, yeah, yeah. brand new. 
it looks Amazing. like I've just knitted it <laughs> and also it responds really beautifully to blocking so oh, yes. you know because I, I knitted the the lace shawl in it um the tails from the isles of Purbeck uh -huh. and it when I blocked it it's and it's held the blocking that'll be well. the silk and yeah. yeah and it is like just I think the round twist is really yeah. helpful for durability absolutely as well so can you imagine the outline tee with this with its kind of drop stitches oh. around the neck yeah, and down yeah, yeah. the front mm -hmm. um and I think it would just drape really beautifully oh, so wouldn't nice. it yeah That'd oh I'd beautiful. love it in brighter than Barbie <laughs> <laughs> it's another one for the queue yes. <laughs> oh, but, but also quite like this stunning. yummy yummy shortcake yeah shortcake on this yeah. versus shortcake but on it's that it's amazing I actually thought that was poison apple there uh -huh. because um, I think this was maybe a particularly yeah. dark batch of yeah. shortcake to be fair but um, but still I mean it is yeah. the difference between you know the color of the base that you start Absolutely. with isn't it and how it, also how the different blends take the take the dye too yeah. so yeah Oh, but that tea would be so nice in this. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Well, the mm. other thing that I think the Yak Tea Yak would be really good for is the Storm Shawl <gasps> by yes. uh, Hokey Locatelli. Because that's a one skein that's shawl. That's a one like... skein shawl. So mm -hmm. you could literally buy like the one skein mm -hmm. and get your whole shawl. And again, it's also got a drop stitch pattern, yeah. uh, stitch detail through it that I think would really respond well to the Absolutely, to, the yak to blocking. Yak. Mm hmm. Mm. That would be stunning. Yeah. Loki's also got lots of lovely summer patterns yes. too. I mean, we shared the staple linen top, yep. but she has quite a few other ones. And, and mm -hmm. also a lot of shawl patterns that really, you know, you could wear in warmer weather. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. s slightly smaller ones or, but even with that one skein, I think because of the drop stitch and when it's blocked, it looks a big. lot bigger yeah. than a one skein. So, you know, if you were to get like a skein of the Yak to Yak, it would really make it go quite far. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It would be lovely in a sweet flax too though. <gasps> just, just, saying. Yeah, just saying. Just <laughs> saying. Would also be beautiful. You know what, maybe well this is called Good Morning Green, this colorway. And it's sort of it's, it's one stunning. of my more variegated colours, but it's still in the same colour family, like it's all sort of bluey greeny. Mm magic it's beautiful that would be so nice that, that would be well. absolutely stunning mm. the sweet flax is just such a beautiful base I can't, and this was another one it took me ages to add mm. add in i kept mm. getting people asking me about do you know like something a linen, with linen. Content. Yeah, yeah yeah and you know. it just is so nice yeah it's interesting isn't it how certain bases really or certain fibers really come into people's consciousness and it, I think sometimes it just takes maybe like a few sort of well-known designers to, to really kind of do a pattern and, and mm -hmm. it kind of sort of seeds it in people's heads that actually maybe that would be yeah. a that would be a lovely yarn and to work linen with. everything is so it feels so hot right now like everyone wants you know things in linen, linen. I'm wearing a linen dress yeah <laughs> This is linen. Yeah. This is linen uh -huh, cotton. Uh -huh. This got linen in it linen. too. Yeah. <laughs> Big fans of linen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. Well, the other one we were going to talk about was the droplet capelet, uh -huh. which I love saying. Yeah. Droplet capelet. It has a <laughs> by, nice sound to it. And it's by Denise Byron. And, I, and I, this has been in my queue for quite a wee while because it mm. came out a little while ago. But um, the reason why it's in my queue is because I burn terribly in the sunshine oh. so I have to be really careful in hotter weather yeah. and I'm saying that in Scotland so like <laughs> for example <laughs> I was uh, at I was sitting outside um, having lunch with uh, Jen who also works in the shop mm -hmm. here and um, it, it was obviously because it was lunchtime it was the, the sun was at its height this yeah. was two weeks ago so this is oh May so this is not like and it's not like summer. prime sunshine time and we had to go inside because I was burning oh my god <laughs> you're such a delicate flower I am <laughs> terrible I really just need to wear sunscreen a lot more often mm. and a lot earlier in the season than I think baby but sunscreen <laughs> But no, or you need a droplet capelet. Or I need a droplet capelet, which would be perfect because yeah. it just sits so lovely uh -huh. over the shoulders. But it's not like really big, so mm -hmm. it's not gonna like drown you, or it's totally. not going to be too heavy weight. Mm -hmm. Or but it looks like quite a. It's not like a dense fabric, but it's more dense than, for example, the series is where yeah. I can imagine big if, holes. I, if, <laughs> I, if, I, if I if I put the series on without any sunscreen, have, like, some diamond I will shape. end up with a really interesting <laughs> pattern. Pattern. 
<laughs> or burn patches. Trendsetter. Yeah, totally. Aww. But uh, but with the the droplet capelet, it looks like it would be a little bit more protective. Yeah, more coverage. Yes, I would still, still wear sunscreen with it, obviously. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I thought that was a really lovely one too. Yeah. And I thought this the splendor. It's another four ply. Yes. Um, the merino silk that will mm. be really just light. Yeah. But still give you coverage. Absolutely. Mm. That felt like it would be. And there's so many color options. And we've also got some of this as well. Oh, yes. Which, well, this is a DK. This is a DK. Uh-huh. Wow, it's a DK. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Well, we'll just show it to you anyway. So yeah, not for Well, this. I've got a sample. Oh, yes, yeah, so you well. do. Let's yeah, show yeah. the sample because... Well, so this is recycled linen, and I've just finished this top, the little crop vest top. Stop the drape on it. Yeah, is do you see that? Swinging, swinging away. Absolutely. Um, I wore it, yeah, so it looks probably a little bit wrinkled. It's been in my bag, but I wore it yesterday. Like, it doesn't look wrinkled at all. <laughs> and I think that's one of the great things about something like linen, um, like knits, not so much yeah, with the, yeah, yeah. the fabric, but uh -huh. that you can throw it into a bag. Well, and it has it been out. just yes. like crumpled in my bag. <laughs> um, but I wore it yesterday under my dungarees, and it just oh, uh, oh. it worked really nicely that would be as perfect. an outfit. But I'm tempted now to make another one in maybe... I was thinking, I've got this new co oh, I didn't get any down. Oh, maybe grab a ball. <laughs> um, this new cotton. So this is a, a DK, so it would work for this this oh, pattern. Yes. This Isn't that color? Color? Yes. I am obsessed with this color. So this Balenciaga is green. <gasps> it is! <laughs> yes! I think it's just called green, but no, uh, no well, it's in my head, that's what I call yes. it. <laughs> I love this green so much. It's made of recycled cotton and recycled plastic bottles. That's amazing. It's so cool. Uh, so I've got it in like uh, 28 colors now. So that's quite like the Jeans Reborn yes, yarn yeah, as I'm well. Getting some more like yeah, recycled yarns in. Good. That's yeah. amazing. But I think it would it would not have the drape that this does. It would be a different look. Yeah, but, but it would still be. I think it would really be quite cute. Yeah, one. yeah. I'm obsessed with that color right now. <laughs> Although I think they're discontinuing for some reason this color. I wow. don't know why. It's, it's like it's such an on-trend color yes, right now. it is. I don't know yeah. why. So I ordered a bit extra of it. I'll probably need to order mm -hmm. more if I do yeah. if I do one. And well, these are the other yes. colors that you have in the, well, some of the other <gasps> colors you the have speckly in, the, ones. in the print. So we've got like a darker blue. And then this kind of lighter, it's quite, almost like a charcoal speckle on it yeah 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 and then this one which is lovely too which is like it's called uh, it's camouflage like a, like a teal really yeah it's like a teal um and uh well like an aqua like brown, almost, yeah, and, aqua and, and like a brown, brown and over the creamy. white it mm -hmm. just feels oh, and amazing there's this one as well that i quite yeah. like sort of more beigey pinky yeah, that's sort of vibe too. almost like a almost like a gold actually yeah, you can imagine yeah, when yeah. you knitted that up that it would look quite gold yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Beautiful. and then these are some of the solids these are all amy's colors <laughs> she knows me so well <laughs> um but yeah th so recycled linen as well it's That's another sweet. recycled yarn it's really nice but I think the skeins are so cute as well. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're 50 grams, but I'm like, oh. And what, how much do you get for 50 grams? Oh, I can't even remember. <laughs> I should, I should, 120 meters. Wow, that's... So that's a that's, little bit generous for yeah. a DK. But still, um, I mean, that's... Gosh. That's good. I love this. I know, that's like a proper caramel, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm. Yeah, so nice. Yum. Or yum. I could just make one of those vest tops in um, another shade. No, I want to do the green one. I think. <laughs> decisions, decisions. I know. That one's called po Positano. Um, pattern and by it's Erica, Erica, Erica Knight. Knight. Mm -hmm. So it's one that's been brought out specifically for, for, the, the for the yarn. Yeah, and it's just really simple. I mean, it's done in two pieces, but mm -hmm. I did, I converted, I just did it in the round up until yeah. the arm, yeah, or yeah. the divide. Yeah. So easy to do. Do you know? I was also just thinking about the um, Palazzo top, oh, yeah. which is actually a poncho, yeah. and it's by Ksenia Nadion. Yeah, how do you I don't know it? how to pronounce okay. her name. Sorry, I'm doing Ksenia. a wrap by her as well. It's oh, are really you? Lovely. What one are you doing? Um, oh, it's called the Sky, is it Skyscraper Skylines? It was in Making Stories, mm. um, their last, their previous issue, which I could 
She okay. also has some beautiful really patterns. Clever. Really, mm -hmm. really clever. And this particular um, one, I think it's just so, there's so many different like stitch patterns in the design mm -hmm. that it would be like a really engaging knit and you would end up with something which just looks exquisite. Stunning. Like yeah. truly. And again, one of those pieces that you would throw on when you're <laughs> when That's I'm burning. True. Yeah. <laughs> That's you know? very so, um, and it's also in fingering weight. And we've shown you quite a, quite we a have, few finger, yeah, few yeah. Weight. So we're going to move on to same our same ones that we've shown you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it is a super beautiful pattern, mm. and it's again, this is another one that's been on my queue for a wee while. Or I wonder, what if you use two, two? You could use two strands of lace. You could use two strands of lace weight. It is quite a, because you could do like almost a slight marl or something. Oh. Or, that would be quite nice. That would be nice. Well, you, do you well, have... Well, my, sta my sort of standard lace... Oh, not standard, like... Splendor. Um, uh, no, this no, is a splendid lace. Splendid lace. So, like, those two blues, mm. I think, would look really nice together. That would be... That's such a good idea. Yeah, something... I don't know, just struck me. Mm. Bit, or I also have the exquisite lace um, by West Structure Spinners West Structure that's Spinners. really good, too. Um, but, yeah, you could yeah. take, if you wanted a little bit of marl, Absolutely. Or even if you just liked the color or the yarn. Absolutely. You know, no, it would be beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of it being a moral. Yeah. Like particularly like two shades that yeah. are kind of closer Close. to each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. And it would really bring like an interesting depth to yeah. the to the texture as well. Oh, that would be I've always wanted to marl these two. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a seaside. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but I do beautiful. like those as well. Beautiful. Or those. I'm in a blue mood, obviously. But, I mean, you could even yeah. you can. Sorry, I'm going to no, dip, go for dip it. down here. Go for um, it. You could even go for something like oh, <gasps> sweeties. These two. Mm, so that's melon balls on fire, and then we've got is that the guilty Liz, feminist? Guilty, yeah. the guilty feminist. Yeah. Such a good name. <laughs> it's, it's good, eh? But see if you put those two together and marled it. Oh. Absolutely that beautiful. That would be. In that fact, would be really nice. You could any of the fingering weight patterns that we've mentioned. Yeah. Actually, you could Take marl two strands, of, two strands mm -hmm. of of lace weight together. Why didn't we think of saying that earlier? Oh, Anyways, we've, we've said, said it, it now. now. We've said it now. It's <laughs> yeah. all good. It's yeah. all good. It's fine. <laughs> oh, we've got one last pattern. <gasps> yep. Which is the Cycladis shawl, and it's our only sh only. Um, summer knit that uses worsted weight. Mm -hmm. Is it worsted weight? Yes, I'm it sure is. It was. Oh, yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we have some beautiful worsted yarns that could be used Show for summer. Show them the summer. jeans. So well, I love the <laughs> jeans. So I have. I think I've shown you this because I'm going to knit the poetry pullover in this shade here. But this is another one of the the shades, and they go progressively lighter. So here's another one. And like I said before, these are undyed because they wanted to reduce the amount of dye and water they were using. Uh, so these are the colours of the of the denim. And again, it's got a little bit of polyester, but the polyester is, it's like rough. with the cotton, is yep. from recycled bottles. Mm -hmm. So it really is a very conscious and environmental yarn, very thoughtful. Yeah. You know, and I think like the Cycladis shawl, which is this amazing like like quite a simple lace stitch but all over lace mm -hmm. pattern and then with some amazing fringe. fringe love the fringe i think summer speaks to fringe yes is it? And yeah, like, yeah it's just so perfect so i think you could do an amazing <gasps> denim mm -hmm. cycladis so you could take like for example the darkest <gasps> one and then have a light denim fringe, fringe or the other way around uh -huh. or you could make it a less um, the contrasting contrast. one. Mm -hmm. I think that would be. Would that not be that absolutely would be so amazing? Nice. And I haven't done a sample <laughs> in this yarn yet, so. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> also, that's a pattern from Espace Tricot, and it's a free pattern. Is so it? yes, oh, absolutely. So you can go mm, check that out after good. we finish. <laughs> uh, we've also got um, Pep in Your Step Worsted, which is yes. one of my hand dyed, so it is worsted weight. So it would be suitable for this, but here's just a few, a few colors. Mm. Um, but it's got a nice, like the twist. It's so bouncy and very squishy. Absolutely, still has a nice drape for yeah. for shawls. And the thing is, as well, is that you could use something like this for the main part of the shawl, 
and then you could like stash dive. Yeah, use whatever you want. And for the then fringe. like you know, add in bits of mohair exactly. or add in fingering weight. Or, I mean, you could like your fringe you could be. Because you wouldn't need to. I mean, the fringe doesn't need to be the same thickness either. Absolutely like, not. Whatever no, you want it doesn't. To use. And in fact, I think the original. I think the original sample uses a zauber ball. Oh, for the fringe yeah. so you get like a range of the colors, colors. going mm -hmm. through it but that's a fingering weight whereas the rest of the yeah. the um shawl is in worsted mm -hmm. so you could absolutely mix things up and and you know dive into your stash yeah, yeah. and see what you've I got i think though i really like well i like yellow and gray <laughs> I, I know love, those love a together. Gray <laughs> or I quite like these, or maybe this was something else. I'm not sure. Those two together. Do you like it? Oh, they're quite rich together, eh? aren't they? Yeah. Like as a like a shawl to take you from summer into autumn. Yep. Mm -hmm. I love this. So that's the Lally Brock, and that is mm. Ishkaba whiskey. Yes, it is. Yeah. I always say it. Um, say that questionably. Wait, I, know, I'm never I know. I sure. heard the uplift. <laughs> I remember how to say this. My husband has been like, has, well, in the past, when I was first creating this color, I was like, okay, tell me how to say it again. Okay, say it again. All right. Is it this? Yeah. Jess and I are not Gaelic speakers. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, that seems like a hard, hard language. I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> but a beautiful one. Jen's all which, right. She's got yeah. a few. Jen has a few phrases. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cheaty. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. So those uh, mm. that pepper, and the other one we've got is this Northern Lights, isn't yes. it? Yes. Uh huh. So there's a few, a few shades. I love this dark, dark turquoise. It's called. And what's this base? So this is wool and silk. Eighty oh. percent wool, twenty percent silk. Um, so it has that sort of light yeah, yeah. feel from the silk or a summery, oh and it goodness. almost feels like when you're knitting with it, like it has a cottony sort mm -hmm. of feel. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Yeah, I it knit would um, be. a cardigan for my daughter in it, the big Lebowski or the little oh, dude yeah. cardigan, <laughs> which was super cute. Super cute. It still fits her. Thank God. Well, also you knitted one for your husband too, oh, didn't you? My so God. again, matchy yeah. matchy. Oh Jesus! <laughs> they, he didn't wear it. He did wear it once this past season but I'll have to I have to like get on him more yeah. or make the Weird. set out the knitwear be like are you gonna wear this today <laughs> Lay, I've laid your yes. outfit on the bed for yeah, you there for you today, go. Darling. <laughs> <laughs> oh I don't have time for that <laughs> who does yeah okay. <laughs> but you know oh. this would also be really lovely as a white horse which is what <gasps> yes. I'm wearing oh it's so what? Wouldn't it? Yeah. I think this is supposed to be DK. It is. But, but I think you could probably do a gauge swatch and yeah, you know yeah. figure it. It's I mean it's supposed to be worn with some positive, positive ease, ease anyway. Anyways. So yeah. you might um have I to do a little bit of bit jiggery of, bit of math with your maths. Or, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> you not, can do it. Not my strong point, but then I did marry a maths teacher and that's really been very that's, helpful over the I years. Imagine. <laughs> I usually a lot of times if I think it's gonna turn out like I would maybe then just knit, if I was between two sizes, I'd yeah. knit the smaller one if the yarn's a little bit thicker. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. Then just, and I mean, I just hope for the best. And <laughs> usually everything turns out fine. Fine. But if you then have a mistake or you, it doesn't turn out exactly you how you want it, willing, then you have to be willing to take, you're you taking do. a risk. You yeah. have to be willing to rip it out. Uh -huh. And actually, that's the wonderful thing about knitting and Absolutely. about yarn is that you can, um, it's not like, you know, I've been watching the Great British Sewing Bee, which <gasps> I just, oh, yeah. I love it. Once but, you make that cut though. I know, but this is the thing, you measure twice and you cut once, as my grandma always told me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but with knitting, of course, is that we can always rip it back and mm -hmm. reuse our resources. Absolutely. Unless it's fringe, in which case, no, that's it. <laughs> You've chosen your fringe. <laughs> You're done. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I think that would be really That'd nice. Be really nice. nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love I love the white horse. I could just keep oh, knitting those. We should actually mention what you're wearing as well, just oh, before yeah. we. Um, so this is the Deshane. I forget it's by Layla. Layla Raven. Layla mm -hmm. Raven. Um, it uses one strand of Aran weight, but for mine, I used two strands of Sport weight. The Kalinka 21, which is the mixture of wool and linen, yeah, not wool and silk, like I said earlier, yeah, wool, wool and linen. linen. <laughs> um, but yeah, two strands of it. It's knit in pieces, um, so you do have to do a bit of seaming. And then the the sleeves, the mm -hmm. stitches are picked up for the 
sleeves. But anyways, such a nice knit. I really want to make another one. I think I've decided that I'd like to make one in the Gossipium Cotton Tweed by Erica Knight, oh, which is yes. two strands of that. Yes, absolutely. Um, That's we well, got this it is there. one. Oh, one it's got caught. Got caught on the darning. <laughs> the darning cashmere um but yeah that's a goldy sort of nutty it's shade just... i don't know what i think i'd probably want to choose something quite bright mm -hmm. just because this just one's really, really dark yeah, yeah yeah no absolutely just to have absolutely. a bit of bit of variety but oh well there's this this wow. is really nice <laughs> that's quite similar to bright to the point it is <laughs> And I just like, there's these know, like, like denim, the darker yellow? denim, yeah, and denim and yellow yeah. running through it. Absolutely. Mm. If we can show I don't it. know if we can see that. Yeah, really. you can. It's but, stunning. Yeah. So that nice. would I be might... amazing as one. Would, and it would be so different yeah. than Well, this you know, one. I mean, I've knitted the Duchesne as well, and mm -hmm. I knitted it using two strands of the Kalinka linen. <gasps> so not with the wool content in it. And it mm. looks completely different. Yeah. You know, it does. It, the, the yarn substitution really makes such a huge difference yeah. to the overall look. So yeah. I can imagine doing one in cotton mm -hmm. and the cotton tweed would make it different again. Yeah. So. I think it'd be really nice. Yeah. I love it. I love knitting. It's love so it. great. It's so yes. much fun. I get so excited <laughs> planning, you know, different oh, projects. No. And oh, no. Well, Jess, I think we should do a little bit of a tour yes. of the of the shop so everybody can see your Perfect. beautiful your beautiful. I mean, shop. it's tiny. It's so tiny, and I always get people telling me, "Oh, well, you photograph you photograph it really well. You're really clever." And I'm like, "I'm really not. <laughs> like, I just I just stand and I just take a picture. I'm like, oh, that's pretty. Okay, we'll take. Well, a picture do you know of one of the things I love so much about your shop is that when you got this beautiful new shelving mm. put in. You know that it's really maximized your use of the space one Absolutely. of the things that we find in edinburgh and um, tenements and in the older shops is that they have higher ceilings yeah and jesse's shop really takes advantage yeah, of that uh -huh. and as you will see shortly she has her own beauty and the beast moment <laughs> fell in the library yes. <laughs> That's but with all, yarn. That's all I wanted since I've opened this shop. I was like, I want a ladder so bad. I want a library ladder. Yeah. And yeah, now yeah. she has one. So we will we will show you that. But first of all, thank you so much, Jess, for oh, you know, sharing you. your beautiful yarn with us. And it's been an absolute delight. It's so. been a delight. Thank yes. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So, here's Ginger Twist. We're going to go in. Hi. Hi, Jess. Here we go. Here's my shop. <laughs> and oh, I'll just give you a wee run through yeah, of what absolutely. things are. Um, so we've got our lovely window display that's so fun because it's a pegboard and you can totally change it up according to your needs or what we have, you know, that's so pretty to display. Mm. Um, then this book cabinet, that's where most of the books live. Um, we do have a few other cubes with books because we just got we're overflowing, overflowing with books. As you can see, they're stacked, stacked on top. Um, got some buttons. Oh, here is the button trolley. Um, and we've also got the lovely cashmere darning wools, which are kind of a recent, recent addition to our collection. Um, now the shop is organized basically from the door, because it's summer, I've got towards the door is all the lighter weights and then it gets heavier as you go in. So we start with lace and four ply and then gets in just chunky and super chunky towards the back. Um, so yes, it goes all the way up to the ceiling pretty much. You see. Um, as you can see, uh, lots, lots of wool, but there's, there's still a few, few cubes that I always try and keep a few cubes, not free, but if I find a nice new yarn, you know, there's something that's available to just slot into. Because <laughs> I'm always finding new yarns. Um, and then this side is all Ginger's hand dyed. So we've got lace weight in the trolley. And then everything hanging. Yes, this is the beautiful trolley that oh, we Oh yes, this is the gorgeous <laughs> trolley. It's so pretty. Um, I've got two, I've got one of those at home as well. Um, <laughs> But then everything hanging is all the four ply or fingering weight. Um, so they're all grouped in their little fiber families. So like at the back here, we've got all the sock. Um, these ones are the mass and mayhem four ply and then the yakety yak and all these ones that you've, that we were talking about. Uh, and then we've got sport weight in these two cubes. And then these ones are all DK. And then we've got worsted there. 
and then all up above is all the air and weight towards the door and then moving into chunky from here to the end and then just all extras and then all the beautiful top. samples as oh, well yes, the, the sweater rail um of samples of things that uh, you know a lot of stuff i wear for a while and then i'll bring it in for um just to have in the shop for a wee bit and then maybe bring it out again <laughs> so oh and this is a jumper i've recently finished um Bandretur by osa soderman um and i've worn it once and then I was like, oh, I think it's getting to be too warm. So <laughs> I brought it in to put on the mannequin, Joan, for a wee bit. But And yeah. you're beautiful. Oh, and then my beautiful ladder, yes. <laughs> <laughs> my bell moment. It's not on wheels, though, but I think that's probably for the best because we are in a small space. <laughs> and I I think when I, the guy that did my shelves, he was amazing. Um, but when I was like, I really like this on wheels. I really like the ladder on wheels. He was like, oh... You know, I just don't uh, like he was like oh I just don't think it would work work very well I was like okay fine so anyways but I've got my ladder anyhow and I can get you know all the way up to the top um, no problem I won't do that just now <laughs> and how long have you had the shop now Jess? goodness sake um, just over will it be nine I, th I think it might nine. be nine well, it's you gonna be your nine seven, you had your seven years it was 20 in the before 20, times. Yeah, no! 30, 20, 22. We're in the year 2022. Yes. Yeah, so it'll be nine, nine years in years. June. Oh my goodness. Yeah, crazy. Next. I haven't gotten anything planned. <laughs> Maybe I'll, pl I'll plan something for year 10. Excellent. Well, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a big one. Yeah. That's a big yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> it just, it feels like, I feel like I've not ever been doing anything different, but... Mm -hmm. At the same time, it doesn't feel like nine years. Yeah. Like, it's just yeah. ludicrous. The shop has completely evolved over that yes. period of yeah. time. You know, it looks very mm -hmm. different now than when you had it well, in the very beginning. My God, when I first yeah. had it, I mean, looking back on any pictures, like, you know, when Facebook memories come up or whatever, mm -hmm. the shelves just look... I mean, I thought I had so much wool. I was like, I, but I had nothing compared to what <laughs> I have now. Like, the sh I'm like, the shelves are empty, basically. <laughs> but, yeah, it has evolved a lot. And luckily, mm -hmm. you know... Fingers crossed it still continues to grow and work out and And yeah. you're you're very easy to access from here as well. There's lots of buses that come yep. here from Loads in town. Of buses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and and there's some lovely walks as well just around this area yep. too. So yeah, yeah. well worth coming for Absolutely. for a visit if you're if you're in Edinburgh. Yeah, and it is in. I mean it's not that far out of like city city centre. Mm -hmm. I mean we're like ten minute walk from Holyrood Palace yeah, yeah. and like Arthur's seat and everything. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's very accessible, yeah. and this neighborhood's super cool now. It is a super cool neighborhood yeah. <laughs> because you're here, darling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for giving us a wee tour. Oh, around the shop. thank you for coming. Thank you, darling. Bye. Bye.